like to uh, round up. I really, really admire you um, to take it all in all day. Um, often, when we have meetings like this, you'll, if it is for the women, you'll get maybe four times the number. If it's for men, we are glad to have up to this number, which shows you that men are the head of the house, but women are the head of the spiritual. If you go to prayer meetings, you get more women than men. So I think we have abdicated our role and nobody, no pastor, no prayer group, no intercessory group can play a role that God has designated at the place of a man. And there's a reason, because the enemy doesn't want our families or even our churches to be at the peak of their spirituality by making men spiritually lazy. And when you get men talking together, it's either business or football. Spiritual matters are maybe controversial things they want to argue about, but very few people know uh, certain spiritual principles which I want to, um, I want to mention in, uh, in closing. Um, if, if God has called me to be the head of my family, it's not just administrative head. It's not financial head. It's not decision-making head. It's a protective head. If I'm a head, I'm, cov I'm given a, cover a covering, an umbrella, a roof over my family. And I have a role to be able to declare certain things. And this is not just to be more prayerful. And I'll explain what I mean. Three instances. One. Example is Elijah said to Ahab, Ahab, as sure as I stand before God, there will be neither rain nor dew except by my word. That is spiritual authority. That the devil cannot just railroad his way into your family if you are the watchman. You should be able to make a stand. Elijah didn't say, um, as sure as I wrestle in prayer, as sure as I will fast for uh, 40 days. He says, as sure as I stand. And he's not saying, devil, you cannot attack me because I'm going to stand against you. No. He says, as sure as, as I stand before the Lord. If you take your stand before the Lord, the enemy will not be able to stand before your family. And this stand is very, very important. You need to be a person God recognizes as having a stand. It's not somebody, I mean, uh, I know time does not permit, and I don't want to beg for more time because I'm more tired than you are. <laughs> I only look young. That is this, look. A lot of people have difficulty differentiating uh, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The one, one of our pastors during my discipleship um, meeting I have with, uh, with people says, I don't care whether I'm speaking to God the Father, the Son, or the Holy Ghost as far as long as my prayers are answered. That is not polite. If you're speaking to the Father, you should be able to know who you're speaking to. And if you're speaking, I mean, in the Bible says, it seems good to us and to the Holy Ghost. They knew who they were referring to. Why did the devil put it in your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? Peter knew who Ananias and Sapphira had offended because they were in fellowship. And sometimes, I mean, worship is good if all we do is just to sing worship songs. But worship is worth ship. You need to know the person you are worshipping. And the person you are worshipping need to know you are worshipping them. And, uh, and we, we rush through things. Really, I think for God to recognize you, 
you need to be a friend. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant doesn't know what his master is doing, but I call you friends. There was a, a, a time passed um, um, when I was praying, I'm praying and praying uh, a lot, and um, um, uh, and the Holy Spirit says, so you've been praying, and all the rest of it. He says, um, you pray that I should be with you, that I should be with you. Okay, so if you want me to be with you, what do you want me to do when I'm with you? Is it polite for you to be with me? And you don't talk to me? And I don't talk to you? He says, you don't talk to me except when you need something. You don't talk to me until you need power. You're not talking to me as somebody with whom you love a relationship, but somebody you need and require something. I need you and I to be friends. So before you can be the head of the family, you need to be able to say, as sure as I, can you finish it? Yes. Uh, you know what, is that important? Why is it important for me to be able to stand? Because normally when God is in, in the room, we usually fall. Paul fell when Jesus came on the road to Damascus. Um, John, the, the apostle on the Isle of Patmos, when Jesus appeared, he fell. Uh, usually people can't stand in the presence of God because they're not used to carrying his glory. And I want to be a person that when God comes, we can have conversation rather than me being slain in the spirit. Because I'm able to contain his glory. Amen. Number two, Moses raised up uh, the rod of God in his hand. The Bible tells us that when Moses raised up his hand, Israel prevailed. And when Amalek, sorry, and when Moses' hands were weak, Amalek prevailed. Which means, again, Moses wasn't praying. He was standing before the Lord and he was doing something. He was doing something. And um, 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 briefly, let me explain to you the importance of Moses raising his rod. You know that the rod Moses used initially was for defense, ordinary rod. And when he came to the uh, burning bush, God says, what is that in your hand? And he says, it's a rod. So throw it in the, uh, on the ground. It became a snake. Pick it up. It became a rod again. And God says, when you go, this is the sign you will use to prove to the people of Israel that I have met with you. So ordinary defense became a weapon of anointing. And that's the rod Moses used in all his miracles. <coughs> but when Joshua came to, to, to fight the Amalekites, Moses surrendered his own tool of authority and anointing. You know, when somebody wants to surrender in battle, they raise their rifle. So he surrender. In other words, all that I stand for, I put it on the line that this man may succeed. Now that's the role of a husband. So when the enemy comes, he's looking for the head. And if you stand there, because of who you are in Christ, because of your level of integrity and spirituality, the enemy will say, hey, I can't go into this family without this man's permission. That's what happened. My last topic is this. Jesus said, Peter, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you like wheat. But what? Why did Jesus say that? Because Satan couldn't touch Peter without Jesus' permission. So if we are really the head, Satan cannot just barge in and begin to do anything he likes with the way our children think. Never mind modern society, never mind British society. We're talking of spiritual environment. If I take authority in the spiritual environment, then they can't do anything. So I'm protecting my children, my grandchildren, and generations after me. It's my responsibility to make sure nothing bad goes into their head. Do I have an amen? Amen. I've stopped before I was stopped.